Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Hey Joe, Two and Love. Here we're with episode 113 for Sobart's overview of topics. Right here to discuss some good things on the podcast today. Um, talk about the Lakers. Thanks to my baby, uh, Mariah. She, her suggestion. Um, t- also, LeBron James' extension. Um, talk about Baker Mayfield. Some trades in the NFL happening recently. Go- some recap of the NFL preseason week two. Give some thoughts on that. Along with Deshaun Watson's extension or extended suspension, I should say. Much more. But, Wes, thank you for joining me. If you're new to the podcast and you want to see more sports of the topics videos or I cover sports channel stuff, rumors, thoughts, etc. Combine them on the homepage. Click in the script subscriptions you can find the playlist for my sports of the topics videos on the channel but thank you let's get started so just want to get this one out of the way just might as well but Deshaun Watson's suspension has been extended after an appeal by Roger Goodell in the NFL. The initial suspension was six games for the upcoming season. (laughs) Excuse me. Excuse me. But, so, the initial... Suspension was six games. But after an appeal from the NFL, the NFL and the NFLPA Players Association has come to agreement of 11 games for the upcoming season and a $5 million fine for Deshaun Watson. I mean, the fine is gonna be sim- It's gonna be simple considering the fully guaranteed deal. But you know, I discussed the six game suspension, and you know, if they decide to roll with Jacoby Brissett for the six games, the fir- their first half. Of the schedule looks doable. Looks doable. However, the few games after that start to look like nightmare ish. And it looks tough. So, including the Ravens, the Patriots, you know, it gets tough. So, now Deshaun Watson is on schedule to return week 13 versus the Texans. His former team. Now, judging from a ske- jumping, judging from their schedule, they got their work cut out for them and you know, like I said, I like Jacoby, but but I still don't know why you let go of Case Keenum for Jacoby Brissett. You know, yes, it was a draft pick, I suppose, but you know, I don't know. <sighs> but see what happens. See what happens. I still love the roster. I will 
say that. I love the roster, but you don't have the right QB. It's a tough order. Tough call. LeBron James and the Lakers. You know, talk about a team I haven't talked about in a while, but due to a suggestion... I figured I'd oblige and, you know, with LeBron James' extension, I have a bit of reason to talk about them. So, nonetheless, LeBron James last week has signed an extension with the Lakers, a two-year extension worth 97.1 million and includes a third year option so by the time this deal comes to an end he'll be in his 40s now look i've i said it many times and i think many get the same idea when it came to the lakers Last season, you know, yes, they're old, but they're all very talented, and you know, if they stayed healthy, then there would be a playoff team, if not have a run. Alas, they not stay healthy. Westbrook's play did not bear out. Anthony Davis, same thing, LeBron, etc. I mean, but what I will say is LeBron's extension, I'm not surprised by. You know, LeBron, I've also mentioned his play on the field or on the court was not the problem. It was how the team was orchestrated and his knowledge off the court that orchestrated the whole team and puts their future put their future a little in doubt simply because, you know, again, you looked across the league. You know, Kyle Kuzma had a very good season with the Wizards who were just shy of making the playoffs. You had Brandon Ingram with the Pelicans who made the playoffs over the Lakers and the West. I mean, Lonzo was having Lonzo and Caruso. They were both having very good seasons with the Bulls. And then, obviously, injuries dwindled them. But, you know, that's the risk when you have put your stock and players set to win now. And, you know, injuries arise. And... They always happen in sports, but as far as the Lakers this season, you know, LeBron, I expect to still have that stability. I don't, ex- I don't, excuse me, I don't obviously expect that him to s- average feeling like. Three points a game. Of course, the key is Anthony Davis. Can he stay healthy enough to, you know, take that load off LeBron and be the one and not have LeBron have to be the one slash 1A? Certainly a thought, but if they can do that, then if that can happen, then 
they should be in the mix for the playoffs. You know, yes, the West is up for grabs. You know, y'all are parody in the West during conference this season. Although, of course, the Warriors are on the mission again to show them, show the league that they are still who they are. So, you know, we'll see. But either way, you know, doesn't really hurt. Doesn't really dwindle the Lakers. Nice extension for LeBron, I will say that. Baker Mayfield, no surprise. Baker Mayfield, no surprise, was made the star or for the Panthers for week one against the Browns. For the Panthers, I mean, the writing was on the wall. I talked about it last week, discussing the quarterback competition, you know, Is there going to be peer pressure? Now, I haven't, I haven't looked at, well, Baker didn't play, same with Darnold, they didn't play against the Patriots, but, you know, give or take, I figure Baker is doing enough in Cam to surpass Darnold. And, you know, they're facing the Browns. So it'd be a huge disappointment not for Baker to start. Now, on the flip side, news for the Panthers, set Matt Corral. Their QB they took out of the third round out of Ole Miss. He suffered a Les Frank injury in his foot. And reports came out that he may likely miss the whole season for the Panthers, which, you know, I pitched the idea before when Baker was first traded for the Panthers. You know, Baker's the starter. You trade Darnold, if not cut him. You let Corral sit and learn from Ager. Well, it seems like now with the news, Mark Corral has no choice but to sit and watch. And it's unfortunate, but no. Look. Some rookie QBs, they're throwing the fire, and they can completely handle it. Some just don't pan out and need time to grow. Matt was one of those QBs I think needed time to grow. And this may, in turn, be a good thing. Because, you know, not only for him, but Sam Darrell. Because let's say Baker and things go sideways. And then Corral is thrown in as a here. Uh, as try to be the savior. But that team is not. It has the potential to be a playoff team, but it still has things missing about that team. So, you know, Baker got a chip on his shoulder, you know. I'm not surprised. I think this was a good move for the Panthers. And 
Corral's injury may be a blessing in disguise for him and Arnold. We'll see. We'll see. The next 30 of the NFL Top 100 came out last week. We talked about and gave my thoughts on the first 50, 100 through 50. Now, the or 51 rather. Now, 50 through 21 has been released, and we shall go over it all. And give my thoughts on it one second. Some surprises, I will say. Some surprises. All right. So, 51 left off with Alvin Kamara. No surprise. Now, 50, Micah Hyde. My guy, you know, one of the best safeties in the league for the Bills, you know, is one of the unique underrated pieces of that team. Good to see. Devondre Campbell, who had a hell of a season for the Packers. Linebacker made the Pro Bowl, you know. Good on him. You know, some of the, many of these guys didn't even make the list last year. So, that is very interesting. Next up, the now leader of the single sack record in a season for the Bears. Robert Quinn who broke Richard Dent's sack record or single-season sack record last season. Well-deserved, you know. Quinn was a force on the Rams, you know. Was brought in on a couple teams, but it didn't pan out. As people thought, but good see, good see. Next up, another great linebacker, Fred Warner. You know, for the 49ers, he is more coming to his own, which you like to see. You like to see the mic of that defense. Really, he really is. The quarterback kind of of that defense behind Bosa. 46, Austin Eckler. The other safety of the Bills, Jordan Poyer. 44, Dak Prescott. Now, it's not like he's in the top 30, but now again, it's just a list, but Dak 44, I think is a little generous, a little generous. I'm just saying, you know, hey, hey, hey. Derwin James, who had a great comeback season that is now the highest paid safety in the league, is ranks in at 43. I mean, a lot of these guys didn't make the list, like I said, last year, which is hilarious. 42, big jump for Big Cameron Hayward, future Hall of Famer for the Steelers, good to see. Number 41. Tristan Wirfs, who I mean, just bursts on the scene for 
the Bucks and has been a solid piece in protecting the other side of Brady since his first couple of years in the league. Number 40, Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert. I mean, he had another solid season off of 5,000 yards passing. You know, team was just that close to making the playoffs. Just that close. But, alas, they failed to make it. But, you know, Justin Herbert and what he's done his first couple years in the league has been astounding. Yes, he has not played January and playoff football, but, you know, if the team can fulfill on its potential this season, I think they'll make a good run in the playoffs. They have a drop, but still... Chris Jones, when I mean, it's hard to argue there's a few top defense tackles in the league, and Chris Jones up with all of them. Joe Mixon, number 38. No surprise. DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins, you know. 37. As much as I love DeAndre, with his injury last year, and the time he missed, you know, this is another hiccup. Him at 37. 37. You know, I mean, I get it. He's impactful and a great player but honestly he should be at least in the 50s if not 60s for a time you miss that's just me number 36 lamar jackson bit of a dip but granted he did miss time with that ankle issue at the end of the year. Keenan Allen made a big jump for last year. 20 spots at number 35. Deserve. Kevin Byard. Another great player. Who was underrated. Didn't make the list last year. Which is another funny pickup. But good as well. Nick Chubb, 33, you know, so is good, and so is the rock for the Browns backfield. 32, Mark Andrews, you know, he's arguably the best tight end in the league, arguably, arguably, I mean, if you make the Pro Bowl starters over Travis Kelsey, then that shows something. Now, to me, he's not better than Kill or Kelsey, but he's definitely in the tier below when it comes to him, Darren Waller. I mean, this continues, but. You know, Zach Ertz, I mean, good pieces. 31, Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook. Next Viking on the list, you know, took a bit of a dip. Still was productive, but, yeah, a bit of a dip for... The cook. At number 30, Joey Bosa. I mean, 
It's hard to not like Joey Bosa for the Chargers. 29, Bobby Wagner. Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer. Another potential Hall of Famer. Quinn Nelson, the Beast at 28. This ranking kind of warms your heart just because of the story of last season. Matthew Stafford comes in at number 27. 27. I mean, with what he did coming, he didn't even make the list last year. That is hilarious. But, you know, but Stafford, you know, what he did with the Rams cannot be understood. You know, the trade, everything that was built into it. I mean, great for Stafford. 26, Stephon Diggs, you know. Wasn't as impactful as he was in previous years with the, or the previous year with the Bills, but still very productive when it mattered. Except that playoff game versus the Chiefs. 25. We had Joey. We start off with Joey at 30. 25. We go to Nick. Nick Bosa, 25. You know, had a very good season. You know, like 15, 16 sacks for Nick Bosa. Great season. This was. Dang. Such a move. Very bold. Very bold. Jamar Chase at number 24. Jamar Chase. I mean, look. That was a rookie season for the ages for Jamar Chase. I mean, him and Burrow, you know, I mean, the first game versus the Chiefs, that is when he really, you really knew that this was for real. And he's only a rookie, or he was only a rookie, but he did break Randy Moss's record for a rookie wide receiver. So that's to be respected. 24, though, I mean, crazy. I think he is crazy as well as 23. Trevon Diggs. Trevon Diggs. Now, another player I think is good, but, you know, a little too high, I would say, you know, mid 30s, mid 30s, but. Possibly 40s, but, you know, it is some list. 22, the mouse, or Mr. Kittle, the George Kittle. Well-deserved Mr. George Kittle, number 22. You know, I mean, he is consistent. I mean, geez. And then, last for today, 
Number 21, Joe Burr, Joe Burrow, Joe Cool, whatever you want to say, Joe Burrow, number 21. I mean, geez, Joe Burrow, I mean, I don't have complaints about Burrow. I mean, you cannot fault how he took that team with barely any protection. I mean, they should have, should have lost the Titans. But due to turnovers and Joe Burrows still being Joe Burrow and not, you know, breaking under the nine sacks, they persevered. Then they were down 18 points, 21 to 3, versus the Chiefs. They found a way, they persevered, and won it. They were just shy of the fairy tale ending and being the Rams in the Super Bowl, but no shame from Joe Burrow, that offense. You know, just curious how they pick up where they left off from last season, but Joe Burrow, class act, 21. No problem. No problems for me. We had a couple trades in the NFL. And a couple of them tell some interesting stories. Interesting. We'll go to the Vikings trading for Nick Mullins first. But yes, the Vikings traded for Nick Mullins, quarterback currently for the Raiders, for traded a conditional seven round pick to acquire Nick Mullins. Now The story of the preseason so far has been for the Raiders would be who would be the backup QB behind their car. I mean, Mark Samarioa is feuding with Desmond Ritter and Lana. So, how would the backup QB job shape out in Vegas? Well, Jarrett Stilm has done great for the Raiders. I mean, what he did against the Jaguars and then had a solid effort versus the Vikings. You know, Nick Mullins, he did an admirable job as well. And we've seen him... With the 49ers, you know, in spurts that he can get it done. He has some right spots. And, you know, the Vikings, they're, you know, Kirk Cousins is good. I know people like to shy away from that, but Kirk Cousins is good. But, you know... As far as behind Kirk Cousins, it's dicey because you got Kellen Mond, who's coming in to his sophomore season. You know, he did a very good job at Texas a But, you know, you got to push the guy if you're going to 
groom him to be the next big thing for the Vikings. And, you know, Sean Mannion, as their other QB, I don't think is the right guy to push. I mean, we saw him a little bit last season with the Vikings that, you know, I don't think he's the guy to push Mon to be better. And yes, while Cousins is a starter and he's good, he has to also be careful of being a starter. And, you know, Mullins, he's done well in spurts. Mullins, I think, showed some good enough this preseason and he showed the Vikings that well he deserves a spot so three interesting QBs well four currently but I imagine one's gonna get cut with Kirk Cousins, Kelly Mon, Nick Mullins and Sean Mannion. I can figure out who I think is going to be cut. Now let's go to the other trade. So, former teammates reunites. Kyle Murray, Cody Ford, former Oklahoma University of Oklahoma teammates reunites. As the Cardinals trade a fifth rounder to the Bills for former first round pick Cody Ford, you know, the Bills have been shuffling a bit on that O line. And, you know, look, also, if you pay Callum Murray a big ransom. You gotta supply an O line to protect that ransom. So, training for Cody Ford, you know, I think helps. You know, Rodney Hudson is gonna come back for another season. Got Kelvin Beecham, you know, Josh Jones. I mean, got some guys to help out the ship. So, good for the Cardinals. You know, I'd say it was kind of a bargain to get Cody Ford. Could have asked for a mid-rounder, but took the gamble, and we'll see how it pans out. But, nonetheless, that is what I have on the podcast today for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I did too. If you did, though... Click the like button in the corner. Leave a thumbs up. How about the video? Help out the channel. But thank you all. For another edition of Sports of Topics. I'll see you guys next week. But. This is good. And getting closer to the start of the NFL regular season. But until then. See you guys next week as well as closer to NBA regular season and the playoffs for baseball. We're gearing up to that time, guys. We're gearing up. So just patient, and we'll get there. But nonetheless, thank you all. Be safe. I'm Joe Chung Love. Get out of here. Peace.